interviewers love grilling you on binary trees. And you might be really surprised how many companies have asked this question. So you are given a tree and instead of a level or a traversal, they want you to traverse this tree in a zigzag fashion. What does that mean? Let's see what all of this is about. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Next, we are going to see what does a zigzag traversal actually mean and then we will try to implement this solution using a method that we already know. It is just a very small trick. After that, as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand and visualize how all of this actually works in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First things first, what do you actually mean by the problem statement? In this problem, you are given a binary tree and you have to do a zigzag level order traversal. So first of all, what do a level order traversal actually mean? You know that when you're doing a level order traversal, that means you are iterating to the first level 4, then 8 and 15, then 23 and 42, and then 16. Correct? That means you are going level by level, right? And this is the level order traversal. But in this problem statement, you have to traverse this tree in a zigzag fashion. So if you're not aware about it, a zigzag pattern looks something like this. Correct? So how do you implement this pattern while traversing on a tree? You have to actually follow how the zigzag pattern is working. What do you do over here? You go from left to right, then right to left, then left to right, then right to left, right? So similarly, in your tree as well, you have to go left to right, and then right to left, then once again left to right, and then once again right to left. So you have to continue this until you reach the last level. And to return your output, you have to return all of these traverses in form of a list that is a list itself. So the first level will just have the element 4, correct? The next level, it has the elements 8 and 15, right? But you have to go right to left, correct? So the next level should look something like 15, 8. Once again, you arrive at the third level and this time you have to travel left to right. So in your left, you are going to add 23, 42. And once again, you are left with the last most level and you enter 16. So you see how we are doing a zigzag traversal of the tree. Similarly, in a test case number two, once again, you have to traverse this tree in a zigzag pattern. So you go from left to right, then right to left, and then once again, left to right. And you have to return your answers in form of different lists, which is an entire list in itself. So for the first level, you just have four. For the second level, you have eight and 23 in that order. And then for the last level, once again, you have 16, 15. Now, these two reverts, they are complete lists in itself, right? And that is how you have to output the answer for this particular problem. So now, if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, feel free to take a shot at it. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution and try to find out what we already know. You have this binary tree in front of you and you're asked to do a zigzag level order traversal, correct? So as the name suggests, it already has level order traversal in it, right? So if you're new to level order traversals, I would highly, highly recommend you to stop this video right over here and look at my video on level order traversals first. Because as an interviewer myself, if I have to ask this question, I would first ask the candidate about level order traversals. And then as a follow up question, I will ask him, okay, now what do you do if you have to do it in a zigzag fashion? You will understand why. So doing a quick recap, how does the level order traversal actually work? You have a queue and in this queue, you add all the elements one by one, right? You start off with the root element and that is four. You look at four, you pop it out and then look at the children of four. You can see eight and 15 are its children. So you add eight and then 15, right? Moving on, you will look at the children of eight. There are no children. So you move ahead. You pop 15 and then you look at the children of 15. You see 23 and 42. So you're going to add these elements to your queue as well. Right? And this is how the level of traversal actually works. Once this is complete, you will have all the elements like this. Now, 
if you notice one important thing over here, if you mark all the levels, this is your first level, this is your second level, this is your third level, and this is your fourth level, right? And in this traversal itself, you can see that two of the levels are already traversed in the correct way, right? Four is correct and 23 and 42 is correct, right? You only need to do a reverse traversal of the alternate levels, right? Because you have to traverse the second level in the right to left fashion and you have to traverse the last level in the right to left fashion. So in a way, this solution is already 50% correct, right? All you need to do to make this solution completely correct is you just have to reverse these remaining levels. So instead of traversing left to right, if you had traversed these elements in this fashion, what did you do? You arrived at the correct answer, right? You can see that these elements, they have been traversed right to left, correct? So try to think what can you do about it? You have to convert this to this form, right? And what is happening over here? The last element 10, it should come at the first place, right? And similarly, this last element 15, this should come at the first place, right? And you have to do this procedure for every alternate level. The last element should come at the first position, right? So this tells you something, last in, first out. Yes, that is the stack data structure. So what we're gonna do over here is, for every alternate level, we will take the help of a stack data structure. So try to think like this. When you are at the first most level, do not do anything. Just traverse this level in a regular fashion. Now, as soon as you reach the second level, instead of adding the elements 8 and 15 to your list, add the elements 8 and 15 to a stack instead. Correct? And now, once you reach the end of the level, just pop these elements and add it back to your resultant list, right? So this time you will first get four and then you're gonna get 15 and eight because they get popped in this fashion, right? Similarly, once again, just go on to the third level and you see 23 and 42, which are already correct. And then moving ahead, once again, you see 16, seven and 10. Now, instead of adding them to your result list, add all of these elements to a stack first. So I'm going to add 16, then 7, and then 10 over here. As soon as I reach the end of the level, just pop out all of these elements and add them to your result list. So first 10 gets popped out, then 7 gets popped out, and then 16 gets popped out. So if you notice, 23 and 42 are correct, and then you also get 10, 7, and 16 in the desired order. So what did we just do? We took the help of the level order traversal technique and then just did a small change to get it in a zigzag fashion. And to achieve this, what you can do is you can take the help of a flag variable. Just keep the flag to false for the first level. As soon as you move to the next level, just flip it to true. If it is true, you need to take the help of a stack. As soon as the level is over, just flip the flag again. It will be false again. So do not add your elements to a stack. The level completes. Once again, flip your flag. And then now you are going to again add your elements to the stack instead. As soon as your level completes, just flip the stack. And now ultimately you will have your elements in the reverse direction. So based upon this idea, let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have this binary tree in front of me where this root is passed in as an input parameter to the function zigzag level order. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available in my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. So moving on with a dry run, what is the first thing that we do? First of all, we create a zigzag list that will be a resultant output, correct? Next, we just do a little housekeeping that if the root is null, just return an empty list, right? Now, moving on, we create a queue. Now, this queue, is actually used for your level order traversal. We will add the first element root in over here and then we are gonna pop element one by one. After that, as you remember, I keep a flag. Now this flag is false. That means for the first level, I just need to go left to right, correct? 
Moving on, this is the crux of the loop and that is a while loop. You have to run this loop until your queue is completely empty, right? Right now, you just have four in your queue, right? Get the size of the queue next. So this size, this will actually tell you how many nodes do you have in a level. And based upon that, you can actually decide that, okay, now my level is over and I need to flip the flag. So right now, the size of the level is only one because you only have one node, right? And that is node four. Now, moving on, we create two more data structures. First of all is the level and next is the stack. You do not have to use both of them, but you only have to use one of them based upon your flag value, right? So right now, your flag is false. So you run another for loop and in this, you will pop an element from your queue and then look at its children. If the value of flag is false, that means you do not have to use your stack, right? So I can simply write down four in my list, correct? Now this level is over and it will add the elements 23 and eight to my queue. Once this loop ends, you know that you have completed a level. What does that mean? It means that now you have to flip the flag. I flip the flag to true. So this time the value of my flag now changes to true. Correct. I add this level to my resultant list and this will add four to my final list over here. This while loop will run again because the queue is still not empty. You have more elements to iterate upon, right? This time, check the size of the queue. The size of the queue is two, right? And you can see that this is the actual size of the level. So you know that once you have popped two elements, you are at the end of the level. And check the value of the flag. The value of the flag is true. So what I'm going to do is I will pop these elements one by one and I will add it to my stack instead. So first of all, I add 23 and then I pop this element and then I'm going to add eight and I'm going to pop this element. But at the same time, you also have to add 16 and 15 to your queue because when the loop will run again, you still have some pending elements, right? So now this loop is over and you get out of it. That means the level has ended and you have to reverse your flag again. So I reverse the value of flag and this time it is false again. And now what do you do? Your stack is not empty. So just take all of these elements of your stack and flip it. As soon as you will flip it, what do you get? You will get eight first and then you are going to get 23. So you see what is happening over here, right? This loop will run again. And this time I will add 16 and 15 to my regular list. And since the value of flag is false, we do not use the stack and 16 and 15 will get added to my resultant output. After all of this is done, we simply return zigzag and this is your final list, which contains lists in itself. The time complexity of this solution is order of n because you have to iterate over every node in the binary tree. And the space complexity of this solution is also order of n because you need some extra space to store all of these elements in a stack. And going at the very last level, you could have to traverse it in a reverse order. And that is why you need that extra stack space. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that you might be wondering why there are so many different kinds of questions just based on tree traverses. Well, that is because when an interviewer is asking you problems, they do not want to hire candidates who have just mugged up some of the solutions and then trying to solve problems. Because if you just go by, okay, these are the three standard traverses, pre-order, post-order, in-order and level order, then you might be able to just remember these solutions and offer them. But if you're understanding how they work, then no matter what question the interviewer asks you, you will be able to come up with a solution. And sometimes this can be achieved by a very minor tweak. So just try to follow how your interviewer is asking you the question. If this question is a follow up question, then there will be a very small tweak required in the original code and try not to change the code too much. That will tell you how cognitive you think and how efficiently you are programming. So while going through this video, did you face any problems or are there any other sorts of tree traverses that you have found? Can you solve this problem with any other trick with just a minor change? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. 
As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, let me know what problems do you want me to solve next. I do read all the comments and try to get back to you. Until then, see ya.